volcanoes. We'll be learning about three different kinds of volcanoes, shield, cinder cone, and composite or stratovolcanoes. A shield volcano has a very gentle slope. Okay, it's made up of just layers and layers and layers of lava, and it erupts quietly, and it can be from many different openings. So here's a picture of a shield volcano. You can see that it is a very gentle slope. All right, there's a couple different openings here in which lava can come out of. And it's also, you can see how and why it's made of just layers of lava because it just kind of openly spews, leaks lava all the time. So the volcano itself is just made of that lava. An example is Mauna Loa in Hawaii. Our next type of volcano is the cinder cone volcano. So its shape, it has steeper sides and it is made up of layers of pyroclastic material. So pyro, think fire. All right, clastic, remember our sedimentary rocks, those were just rocky rocks, so fire rocks. So these are fragments of rocks that formed during a volcanic eruption. So however, these are not as quiet. They erupt explosively and from a single opening. Some can, well, some have been known to grow quite, quite rapidly. Here's a diagram of a cinder cone volcano, and you can see that we have one central vent of where it will erupt from, made up of layers of pyroclastic material, and it has these steeper sides. An example is the uh, cinder cone from Peru, Catan, Mexico, which actually, unfortunately for this particular farmer, it grew in the middle of their field. So that's bad luck. Another example of a cinder cone volcano, or what was a cinder cone, cinder cone volcano, I should say, is the one that formed Crater Lake in Oregon. So after it erupted, it left behind this crater, but prior to that, it was a cinder cone volcano. The third type of volcano that we we're going to talk about is the composite or strato. So strato means layers, okay? So keep that in mind. These volcanoes can have steep sides or irregular and steep sides. And they are made up of, look at this, layers, two different layers. Layers of lava and layers of pyroclastic material. So they can erupt either quietly or extremely explosively. All right, so here you have a diagram of a composite or stratovolcano. You can see it, it has steeper sides, right? We have one main central vent. You can see it's made up of layers. So strato, remember layers, layers of lava and layers of pyroclastic material. An example of this volcano is Mount St. Helens here in the United States. And another example that I don't have a picture of that you will remember is Mount Vesuvius in Italy with the Pompeii incident. All right, so here's a diagram that compares all three types. So the first time we, type we went over was the shield, remember? So it's got the gentle sloping sides. It uh, erupts quietly from many different openings, made up of just lava. We have our cinder cone, which has our steeper sides, one main central vent, made up of just the pyroclastic material. And then we have our composite, or stratovolcano, with our steep sides, made up of our pyroclastic and our lava. All right, so now that you've learned about the three different types of volcanoes, or the three main types of volcanoes, I should say, there's a couple different places where you can find volcanoes. And they, this, remember, it's all review from our plate tectonics. So you can find them at a divergent boundary, also known as a mid-ocean ridge, a subduction boundary, also known as a convergent plate boundary, and also on hot spots. All right, so mid-ocean ridge, that's our divergent plate boundary. If you have a volcano here, they are referred to as having rift eruptions or they're referred to as fissure volcanoes. 
Because if you remember divergent plates, remember diverge or move away from each other, and that just allows lava to kind of flow from that now rift or fissure in the ocean floor, and it just kind of comes out. All right, so magma wells up in the space between, new crust is formed. And remember this here, this is called a rift, right, where it separates, okay? Ooh, my personal favorite, subduction boundaries or our convergent plate boundaries, right? So remember, we have our two plates coming together, okay? So they are coming together. The more dense plate will go underneath, all right? Once that plate kind of gets back into the earth, it will heat up, it'll melt, it'll cause magma to rise, and then we have a volcano, okay? So this is an example when we have an oceanic plate meeting up with a continental plate, and then here's an example of two oceanic plates meeting up. Again, the more dense oceanic plate will subduct under, it'll melt, that melting causes magma to rise, and then we have a volcano. Hot spots. So they can form in the middle of a plate boundary. Okay, so it's just we have this fixed spot of magma in the middle of this plate boundary, and it kind of just feeds upwards, and it'll create a volcano, okay? So the interesting thing about hot spots is that the hot spot doesn't ever move, right? You can see here that the plate actually moves. So over many, 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 many years, um, that's how we've gotten the Hawaiian Island chain is because the plates are moving away from the hot spot and creating new islands. So Hawaii is a state of ours that just keeps growing and growing. All right, now I'm going to show you a little video to review these volcanoes. And of course, who doesn't like to watch volcanoes erupt? A few hundred years ago, scientists believed that volcanoes were burning mountains of fire. Today, we know they're really openings or vents to the hot interior of the planet. About 1,500 volcanoes around the world are classified as active. Nearly 90% of these rest in the Ring of Fire, a band circling the Pacific Ocean. Their location is no accident. While the Earth's surface looks stable, its crust is made up of immense slabs of rock, like puzzle pieces that constantly shift. Ooh, plate tectonics. Where these tectonic plates interact, volcanoes often form. Friction from shifting plates melts the Earth's crust, causing rock beneath the crust to liquefy. This molten rock, or magma, then becomes a volcano by erupting through rifts in the plates. Once magma escapes from the Earth, it's called lava. But not all lava is the same. Runny lava flows quickly and forms the gentle slopes of shield volcanoes. Thick, sticky lava doesn't flow as far and tends to form the steeper slopes of composite volcanoes. Composite volcanoes can erupt violently, hurling ash and lava at speeds up to 200 miles per hour. These eruptions sometimes blow away large chunks of the volcano itself. Some volcanoes, like Hawaii's Kilauea, form over hot spots in the Earth's crust, where magma rises in the middle of a tectonic plate. Kilauea is one of the most active volcanoes on the planet and has erupted continuously since 1983. Because Kilauea is a shield volcano, this constant eruption is a gentle one. Lava oozing from Kilauea constantly hardens into new land, making Hawaii the only state that's still growing. Living near a volcano can be hazardous, as the residents of Pompeii learned in the year 79 AD when Mount Vesuvius erupted, spewing superheated ash, poisonous gas, and rocks. This deadly combination, called a pyroclastic flow, is far more dangerous than a lava flow Vesuvius buried Pompeii, claiming the lives of 2,000 people. Though volcanoes can be deadly, they also provide benefits. 
volcanoes created 80% of the Earth's surface, as well as much of the air we breathe today. Volcanoes create rich soil for farming, and many countries harness their subsurface heat to create geothermal energy. Both creators and destroyers, volcanoes prove that beneath its calm surface, Earth remains a living planet and a restless one.